We're here at uh, Copper State Buckeye Airfare to look at an engine that I don't recognize, but some parts of it I do. Now, it's not about the particular trike here, although we're going to hopefully show you this flying, but I'm curious about this engine. I'm Dan Johnson talking with Teal Jenkins, and Teal is, well, pretty knowledgeable about this engine, but more than that, we'll get to that in just a second. First, what engine am I looking at here? I don't recognize this. This is a uh, Yamaha RX-1 snowmobile engine from oh. the snowmobile year models 2003 through 2006. So these, this is the exact same engine that they use in their snowmobiles. And not necessarily you, but a home builder might go, well, look, I've found one of these engines. It's got low time or whatever they describe about it. And I want to use this, but we know they may not run at the right speed to run a prop. So one thing about this whole package here I do kind of recognize is I think the gearbox. What am I looking at here, Teal? Correct. This is a uh, Rotax C gearbox. And uh, I've uh, manufactured an adapter to be able to bolt the C gearbox directly to this engine. Okay, and that's this, this part portion right here then. Here, okay. yeah. You basically remove the uh, stock cover and then you could just bolt the gearbox right onto the engine. Okay, so you made this part here then that allowed that installation of this. That is correct. But this wasn't the solution that you were had in mind long term and you have some experience. Tell me a little bit about what your background to know why we should hear what you have to say about gearboxes. Well, uh, my background is military aviation and then after that uh, uh, work at the nuclear plant as a machinist mechanic and uh, mechanical engineering background. So. Um, I've just been, I, I, I love high, more high-tech engines than what we have available out there to us, and I knew that there was a way to be able to bolt a gearbox onto it, so this is where, this is where I kind of got my start. Okay, so this is the beginning now. Let's move on down the line here a little bit and look how you took this through its paces. Here, and this is your Generation 1 that is correct. gearbox. So tell me what we're looking at here, So Teal. after making the, uh, the first, the adapter for the C gearbox, I had a number of people that was really interested in the fuel injected version of that engine. Ah, okay. And the fuel injected engine, they changed the, Yamaha changed the case a little bit, and I wasn't comfortable building an adapter to bolt the C gearbox because I had a smaller footprint to bolt to the engine. And I also had back in my mind that I always wanted to design my own gearbox. And so um, I, I started designing it similar to the C gearbox and a, and a number of people, the Kit Fox guys and the Highlander guys said, well, it's hard to cowl that because we're used to boxer engines so the, in the center line of the prop. You don't have a head sticking up. So how about a chain drive or something like that to get the prop center line? And I, I didn't really like the chain drives. I like gear drives. So I designed a gearbox with an idler gear. Um, uh, is that why this, because uh, it does to me, it looks like this is a chain drive arrangement all inside a housing, but it's not. No. It's a gear situation. Correct. It's a, the, the drive gear and idler gear and then the, the prop gear. And uh, so after dyno testing this one, running it for a, uh, about 150 hours, flight hours oh, and stuff, wow. um, I got uh, Steve Henry of Wild West Aircraft. He's doing a lot of the flight testing. He come back with, I, I really like it, except for the, the, the oil temperatures are a little bit higher than what I'm used to. Ah, okay. So this is the right. oil temperature of the gearbox, the, the yeah, gearbox not the engine, nothing not, to do with the engine, yeah, just the gearbox. Yeah, okay. just the gearbox. And so... I thought, you know, before I go into, and this was, was still test mode, and dyno test, said, before I go into production, I think I can refine this a little bit. So that what, that's what led me to make the second generation of this that's just, it's getting ready to go into dyno testing in Norway, and then after that, then I'll be able to release it and start producing them. Now we're looking at generation two, which is not done with testing yet, but this is the the package that you expect to go forward with at this point. Tell me how this is different. I mean, it's visually quite a bit different. The other one kind of tapered here. This one does not. What all is going on here, Teal? Correct. So on this one, I basically do doubled the oil capacity by adding the, this reservoir sump on this side. In doing that, I added a sight glass and some cooling fins here. Um, it's important to note, though, with my Generation 1, the temperature, elevated temperatures was with 200, around 200 horsepower with uh, running nitrous through it. So around the 150 horsepower would have probably just been fine. But I don't know if somebody's going to buy one of these, add a turbo later, and then have heating issues. So I wanted to just solve that, that problem right now. Okay, and, and you... Uh you said you hit, were hitting some numbers like 300 degrees with that one. What have you been able to achieve right. with this change construction? This one so far, just on the dyno without, uh, or just on the ch engine stand, not the dyno, 
but running a load on it, it's running around 240, 250. Oh, wow, okay. So, so quite uh, a bit reduction then. Yes. Thanks to the cooling fins, thanks to the extra capacity of oil, and, 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 and yet you're using the same kind of ratios and so forth. I mean, the other parts of it are the same. You just change that cooling-related stuff? Exactly. The gear ratios are the same, which are 3.11 to 1 in the gearbox. Now it's important to note that this engine internally has a 1.23 to 1, so combined between the two it works out 3.83 to 1 from engine to prop. Well, okay, so let's let's deviate a little bit from the gearbox, which is a, a nice little bit of machining there, not a little bit, a nice considerable bit of machining, and this one also has a clutch on it, I think you said, right? That's correct, so it can free spin in the direction of rotation, and uh, the direction of rotation is the same as the 912 engine, I get that question a lot, Okay. but it's got a, a large sprag clutch in here, which which does two things for us. On startup, uh, the prop only takes out of the positive power pulses, so since this is a high compression uh, engine, on startup it's slowing down and speeding up for each compression and, and power stroke uh, really okay, fast. Okay. Prop being like a big uh, flywheel effect, it, it really can't start, you know, do that. So this takes all the positive. The other part is when you shut the engine off, the engine can just stop and the propeller can windmill. It's like we notice sometimes on the 912s when they stop, they kind of shake a little bit and uh -huh. it causes damage to the engine mount sometimes. Okay, so now let's go from the back of the shiny parts here to the less shiny parts. From here back, is nothing that you do. You That's, are just adapting this to this. That that is correct. But and this this engine stand is a good representation of if somebody took the snowmobile that evening, this is what they would come up with. I haven't touched for my engine stand anyways, I haven't touched any this is just all stock Yamaha fuel injection from the snowmobile. Nothing done to it. Um so it's a good representation of that. And, and what, kind of, what kind of power is this delivering here, Teal? This is a 150 horsepower is what Yamaha claims, and that's at 10,000 RPM. 10,000, um, okay. Uh, the, me running them on the trikes, I run at about 9,000 RPM, and that works out to be about around 125 horsepower, I okay. believe. Okay, okay. Um, but if somebody, there are guys out there that are squeezing the 150 horsepower out of it. Steve Henry of Wild West Aircraft, uh, he's squeezing... Now with the next engine is going to be 300 horsepower uh, with the turbo. So guys are going to be elevating. That's kind of like why I wanted to go and add these gussets and all this this cooling capacity. To this because I know that the, the next step is going to be okay. 150 horsepower is great, but how's 200 horsepower? So <laughs> I wanted to be ready for that move. I haven't met too many pilots who said too much horsepower is too much. Yes, yes. Um, there is no such thing apparently. So okay, so you're anticipating that people well, and they are. They're kit builders that are finding an engine, they're sourcing an engine somewhere. We understand there are thousands of these engines out there, so there's lots of them for people to choose from, and they can probably get them inexpensively because they're widely used in snowmobiles and in motorcycles. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. This engine is, is the whole cases and everything is for a snowmobile, but a lot of the parts from this engine, like the valve train, the coils, and everything is, ah. is, an, is the same as the R1 street bike engine, so the parts availability is, is, is really easy to come by for this engine, so it makes it more appealing, I guess, for a lot of people to do and also um, there's there's more people coming on board there's uh, one guy offering a wire harness kit for this uh, Ian Bange is uh, offering a complete wire okay. harness kit for this engine for, for actually both engines and now uh, Thomas uh, Halkline of Edge Performance is offering a complete in Norway, huh? in Norway okay. yeah, he's offering a complete fuel injection kit for this uh, to, to replace the stock fuel injection yeah. that so uh, Thomas is kind of simplifying things making it a single throttle body ah, okay. and still getting the performance out of it but maybe not the, the the blip you know quickness in the throttle or something like that but he's making it a lot of people when they do take this engine out they don't want to figure out well where did this wire go How, where do I plug this in they, you, they want to plug and play so there's going to be more plug and play options out there eventually how do we find out more or how can people ask additional questions that perhaps I overlooked to ask you um, at this point, um, they can just call me. My phone number is 623-734-0185. Um, and and you're located here in Arizona. And located so here in Arizona. So that's on Mountain Time then, for yes. those that are calling you. Mountain Ye Time U.S. Yes. And in addition, there's a couple groups started out there based on this engine. One of them is a Facebook group called Yamaha Aircraft Conversions. Oh, okay. And there's a whole bunch of questions and answers in there that's been asked and everything. Lots of pictures, builders putting these together and everything. So there's a lot of information on there. Okay. So they can find out a lot more about the engine that way and the uh, gearbox. They'll just call it the number that you gave us. That's correct. Okay. Read that off to us one more time. It's a 623 734 0185. Right here in Arizona. 
you can learn more about, well, now you learned something about this engine from me, but you can learn a lot more about all the other engines from Rotax, from Continental, and all the aircraft that they go on, on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Teal Jenkins and myself here at Copper State Buckeye Airfare. We'll try and oh, thank you. Looks like Dan Johnson.